hopefully this is part two. Get this shit to play like I want to. I approached the white waiting room in the Rock Hill Greyhound Terminal. I noticed a large number of young white guys hanging around the pinball machine in the lobby. Two of these guys were leaning by the door jam to the waiting room. They wore leather jackets, had bow stuck tail hair cuts, and were each smoking a cigarette. Other side, nigger, one of the two said, stepping in my way as I began to walk through the door. He pointed to a door down the way with a sign that said colored. The next thing I knew, the fist smashed the right side of my head. Then another hit me square in the face. As I fell to the floor, I could feel feet kicking me hard in the side. I could taste blood in my mouth. Wilson winces as he reads the passage from an autographed copy of the book that Lewis gave him. I don't ever remember kicking him, he says. But I know he got my fist. For years, Wilson didn't know the identity of the man he had beaten, though he says that over time, guilt began weighing heavy on his heart. It was only recently, he says, that they became cleared. Underscore, 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 Willie McLeod. Robert McCullough. John Gaines. W.T. Doug Massey. Thomas Gaither. Clarence Graham. James Wells. David Williamson Jr. Max Wolfman. These are the men whom Wilson taunted all those years ago. The men to whom he has been apologizing in recent months, asking their forgiveness and blessing. Their names are engraved on the stools at the counter of the Old Town Easter on Main Street. The former Macrobres is now the family-run restaurant that bustles with hospitality and charm. Waitresses greet regulars by name and pour endless cups of coffee for patrons, black and white. And yet it is impossible to walk in and not feel transported in time. Sepia-toned photographs hang on the walls, images of young black men at this very counter, where temporarily closed signs went up as soon as they sat down. Outside, the historic plant marks the spot where nine Friendship Junior College students took an extraordinary stand on January 31, 1961, choosing jail rather than bail after being arrested for ordering hamburgers and sodas. Convicted of trespassing and breach of peace, the eat. students endured a month's hard labor in a chain gang rather than allow civil rights groups to pay $100 each for their release. The case of the Friendship Nine drew national headlines and soon the policy of jail. No bail was being emulated all over the South. Today, the eight surviving members are hailed as celebrities every time they walk in the door. There are history, says a young white waitress one recent afternoon as she serves coffee to Massey and McLeod. She tells them it's on the house. The men, now in their 60s, smile as they recall those heady days, how young and foolish they were, how filled with conviction and pride. They describe weeks of non-violent training with the Touch Congress down. of Racial Equality, the Gandhi-inspired civil rights organization that taught them not to respond when men like Wilson dumped soda on their heads, or stunned lit cigarettes into their skin, or flood ammonia at the counter. And they describe the swirl of emotions they feel, even now, when they return to this place. There is joy and sadness, says McLeod, who owns a plumbing and septic business. Joy at what they accomplished. Sadness that there was such hate, says Massey, the retired minister who works with special education students. There is always the small part of me goes back to that day. The men say they never thought about their tormentors as individuals with real lives and real names. They forgave them a long time ago. So it has been strange and somewhat discomforting to suddenly be confronted by a real name, the real man, a white bigot who wants to repent. And unease creeps into their conversation when it turns to the subject of apologies. There have been several in recent years, when Mayor Doug Heckles officially apologized to Lewis during the congressman's January 2008 return to Rock Hill, when the York County Council apologized to the Friendship Nine at the dedication of the flat. And now L. Wynn Wilson. His apology, offered in the restaurant in January, was facilitated by the local newspaper, The Herald which Wilson called after reading an article about the Friendship Nine. Not all the men agreed to meet with him. Privately, some questioned his motives, his timing, his sincerity. Well, it's weird how people grow up and they change. You know, you can't be the same person you started out as, you know... I had a lot of hate for a whole bunch of different people. Um, 
you have to just wake up and grow up. And people just got to face the reality is that we're not here alone. This world does not belong to us alone. Um, next thing, you know, what if the animals rise up against the humans or, you know, what if the world just wants to puke us out? You got to stop being selfish. Um, life is too short. And nobody owes you a damn thing. So, those who are out there who believe that the world has turned or changed on them or or the, the monkeys have taken over the zoo, whatever. Don't nobody owe you nothing. And as far as this man apologizing to the black people that he tormented, you know, that's somebody trying to save their own soul. Um, all I can say is this. The opportunity for people to be peaceful and respectful to each other is draining away. Pretty soon there won't be no respect for white people or black people or Mexicans or Chinese or Asian or Filipino or British or, you know, whatever. Pretty soon ain't nobody going to give a damn about nobody else because the divide and conquer is thick. You cannot divide a group of people who are together mentally, physically, and spiritually. Don't nobody owe me nothing. Those who have wronged, did me, or done me wrong, or whatever, karma is a bitch. I'm going to change myself for myself. Don't change for me. Don't change for us. Change for yourself. Kind of hate you got for anybody. Your, your fellow man, your brother, your sister, whoever you hate. You need to let that shit go. Not for them, but for yourself. I wasted enough of your time doing two videos, letting the computer speak on something I saw, you know, on the internet. So I'm going to get back to my football game I was playing before I end up having to buy a new one. You know what I'm saying? You play out the new one, and then the new one comes out. How does that hurt you? So let me go ahead and let you hear what it sounds like. Hold on. Listen. Listen. Gets away. He rolls left, brings this one in. He's in. Touchdown. The tight end rolls in another one, giving him two touchdowns. Touchdown. And it's so difficult. You try and take away the wide receivers. Yeah. You try and take away the big threats outside, and the tight end just kills you. To get in the game, you got to first make the team. You can do the right thing. And here's the extra point. Oh. Denver. 14 nothing Oakland. What a hit. Two. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Look, look, look. 